All right, listen, I, we were ending abruptly and there was a conversation we needed to hit. So I'm so glad you both had a little extra time so we could do this little bonus segment um, for our listeners. Yes. So we were talking about South Carolina. Efficiency. Probably, probably efficiency, but we're going to get there. We were talking about South Carolina being underrated coming into the season, right? Because I was like six. I remember seeing the initial rankings and saying, can, can we see those AP rankings? And I remember saying, six? Why is South Carolina six? Because Dawn Staley should never, ever, ever be doubted. Yeah. She should never be doubted. And I just, I knew somehow that they were going to be really good. Did you think six was the right ranking for them, Lo? For me, I, I I thought they could be higher. I didn't necessarily hate it because I'm like, eh, it's a little unknown. We don't really know. And to me, I know people get so pressed over preseason, preseason rankings. It don't matter to me because it works itself out every time. If the girl is up top, not supposed to be up top, they're going to fall. And the real going to rise every time. So to me, I just like, eh, I lost time, five, five starters. All right, we had six. It'll fix itself. Then that's just how I think about it. So I ain't worried about it. And you, and so listen, I, I knew LSU should be at the top. I agree with that fine lady mm-hmm. champ. And okay, UConn, fine. They're going to what have, you know, Paige Becker's back. Right. And Iowa was, was probably getting the, the Caitlin Clark, you know, bump. But did you think the teams that were ahead of South Carolina all should have been ahead of them? No. Now, once we get to UCLA, I did think they had, had some really good transfers, um, but their transfer in Lauren Betts kind of gives them a South Carolina feel. So it's like, we'll put South Carolina ahead of them. Um, and they beat them last season as well. Utah, I'm not that high on Utah. I watch them play and I'm always kind of like, it's like I'm waiting for something to happen. I'm waiting to be shocked. I'm waiting to see what it is. So. Utah doesn't really move me either. So those two, I was kind of like, eh. But I do think UCLA is, well, they're in a, in a dogfight with Princeton right now. But I did think that they, okay, they, they'll they be decent. I don't know about um, ahead of South Carolina and Utah just don't ever do it for me. I don't know. Okay. So it, we, we should note that the week two rankings that we have listed here, that was um, as of November 13th. So we know they're mm-hmm. about to shift again. They're about to right. shift again. But to me, South Carolina is now in the proper place. I have a Period. feeling Iowa may may drop a little. I'm not sure. So let's Go let's let's to. focus on Iowa, right? Okay, because we've talked about Caitlin Clark on this show many times, and I want to be very very careful because we are not coming for Caitlin Clark. Mm-hmm. We are not attacking her. She is a phenomenal basketball player. So I want to always say that and make that clear at the outset. Um, and she's getting a lot of media attention as she rightfully should, right? But she's not perfect. And like any player, we're allowed to critique their game, exactly. right? And so right. I didn't really get into it last week. We had Kelsey Nicole Nelson on, um, Sarika Foster Brasby, and we were talking about the differences in the way Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese are covered. But we were talking about her big, you know, 44 point game. And Kelsey noted what she shot. And I didn't like go into it then at that point, but now I'm seeing some discussions that are happening on social about the fact that, you know, she doesn't always have like the most efficient, you know, shooting performances. And like, let's be clear, let's, Caitlin has to shoot a lot. I mean, look, she's also important. She needs to set up her teammates and get them going too, but she doesn't have the most amount of help. So we understand that she's gonna shoot a lot but she does have some inefficient performances. And it's like, if you say that, woo, the people Hail come Bruce. for you. So yeah. I, I wanted, I want to know both of your thoughts on this below. I'm going to start with you because you had a tweet and you said like, oh, the people don't care. I, I'm, I'm probably paraphrasing a little bit, but you said people don't care about efficiency. efficiency. And I knew mm-hmm. what you were talking about when you said it. And then Tarika chimed in saying like how people came for her because she was commenting on efficiency. So why do you say that? And 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 can you talk a little bit more about what you were getting at? Yeah, um, I say that because like like it says, efficiency matters. Like you you can score a lot of points and that's cool, but how many shots does it take you to get there? Like, let's be for real here, you know what I mean? And I'm not, it's, and to me, even if take it a step further, when we say, well, Caitlin has to task to take all of these shots, but why? 
why don't we have people around her that can shoot the ball as well? Why aren't we recruiting better to put better pieces around her? Because her coach got on social um, in the press conferences before and said, oh, we don't have all of these five stars. Well, why not? Why are you not on the recruiting trail, girly? Like, why does she have to take all of these shots? You know what I mean? Like, are, is, any, is nobody else on the team capable? Because today she also got in the press conferences and conference and kind of alluded to the fact that they need to have somebody else that can shoot. Essentially saying that Caitlin was shooting the ball too much. But it's just like, once again, you created this monster. You can't be mad when the monster bites. You have let her take these shots. You have let her. The only reason it's an issue today is because it didn't look good. You didn't get the win. So you can't, don't, don't pick and choose now. You're going to let her shoot it, let her shoot it. You know what I mean? And try to get some better people around her because she shouldn't have to take that many shots. So I kind of feel like it's a double-edged sword for her because if I don't take them, will we win? But if I do, when we don't, it fall back on me. So once again, coach, get, get your girly some help. Do something. And I always go back to the coach to me. Yeah, Callie. Yeah, like I mean, no, Dawn Staley masterclass of recruiting. What do you think? Exactly. <laughs> no, I mean, I think that you guys are both so right. Just for context, Caitlin Clark in that loss, that upset loss, she scored 24 points. Yes, but she was nine for 30 or nine for 32. <laughs> that can't be right. <laughs> Wait, yeah, can we get oh, nine for 32? Yeah, can let's get, get that up because that, that doesn't even sound right. Um, But that's concerning either way. Right. Yeah. Nine of 32. <laughs> okay. Oh, so yeah, weak. that's, that's, that's. And the thing is, like Lo was saying, you can't excuse the high utilization when that's your choice. You know, you got to be able to, to plan better. You yep. set up some plays, something, do something. Cause that's, it's not, it's not ideal and it doesn't look good. That's all. He and I hate that you even had to give that disclaimer ahead. Like, no, we're not, we're not you know, dissing her or anything like that. This is, we're literally just talking about her stats. It's nothing. But we do have to give it. We do have to give it because even though we give it and even though we give her praise, there will still be people in the comments saying that we're hating on her, you know? And um, it's unfortunate. Like one, just listen because no one is hating on her. And, and two, you know, heliocentric offenses don't work well in basketball. Mm -mm. Men, women's, pro, okay. college, doesn't matter. It doesn't work. And so the fact that this was their situation last year and that they haven't done anything to improve it, whether that's by recruiting or whether that's by your schemes, like I think as Lo pointed out, that's a failure on the coach and their entire staff for recruiting. It's Negative. not a failure on Caitlin's part, part. They shouldn't put her in that position. But I do tend to agree like with the fact that they might like it. You know, Caitlin gets a lot of attention. She brings a lot of shine to the school, a lot of shine to the sport. And so they like these big performances where she puts up all these numbers and they win. It's good for the brand. But when it doesn't work, then what? But it's not the best brand of basketball. It's not it's you know, it, it's it's fun, but it's not the best way to play basketball. Agreed. Period. That is Period. all. Period. So listen, we love Caitlin. And of course we love her because look, she's at a Big Ten school and you know, here on NBC, we cover, you know, the Big Ten. So we are excited, you know, for her and what she's doing and as a basketball fan, but we're just saying like, coach, do better for Caitlin, put her in a better position because she's an incredible player. Listen, appreciate you both sticking around to talk with me about this, just to address this. We will be back. We will continue to be covering women's basketball all season. Take care, y'all. Hey, thank you for watching Brother From Another. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do that now. Don't forget you can catch us three to four weekdays on PeacockTV.com and on Sirius XM Channel 85.